Around six months ago, I tested the nearly exact graphics card equivalent to the original Xbox's GPU, the NVIDIA GeForce 4 Ti4200. After making that video though, something I and a few other people wondered is how the card would hold up in some HD gaming. After all, the original Xbox did receive some ports for games in HD. So in this video, we're really going to put this thing through its paces and see how well the original Xbox's GPU games in glorious HD. For those of you who didn't watch the original video, I'll briefly recap on the card's specs and what makes it identical to the original Xbox's GPU. It's using the NV25 GPU which comes equipped with 4 pixel shaders, 2 vertex shaders, 8 TMUs, and 4 ROPs. If we compare this configuration with the original Xbox's NV2A GPU, we can see pretty much the exact same power under the hood, with the TI4200 sporting slightly higher clocks on the core. Now memory wise, the TI4200 has 128MB of DDR RAM clocked at 222MHz, which has the memory bandwidth coming in at 7GB per second. This is where the biggest difference between the two comes in, as the original Xbox's GPU has access to just 64MB of RAM, which is also shared with the system. While a 64MB version of the TI4200 exists, I don't have one for today's testing. Let's have a brief overview on how this card came to be, and if you're not interested in the history, there will be a timestamp you can use to skip straight to the benchmarks. Anyhow, the story of the TI-4200 actually starts with Nvidia's rival at the time, ATI. They saw a gap in the sub-$200 market with Nvidia's GeForce 4MX cards, as they offered relatively underwhelming performance as well as only DirectX 7 support. To take advantage of this, they released the Radeon 8500LE, which was a slightly cost-cut version of the full-fat Radeon 8500 that was offered at a lower than ever price of $199 USD. Now this created a bit of a problem for Nvidia, as they didn't have any DX8 cards in that $200 sweet spot to compete with the 8500LE. As such, they released their own slightly cut-down version of one of their flagships. This was the GeForce 4 Ti4200. It was priced the same as the 8500LE at $199 USD, but was able to consistently outperform the Radeon. As such, the TI4200 became a huge hit with budget gamers of the time, as its priced performance was unmatched. Not only that, it was a great little overclocker and able to overclock to TI4400 or even TI4600 levels without much trouble. So why a GeForce 4 instead of a GeForce 3? Well, all of the GeForce 3 cards are missing that second vertex shader that was present in the NV2A, which ends up giving them half the vertex output. The GeForce 4's NV25 is a pretty much identical core setup to NV2A, but you do have to keep in mind that they aren't exactly the same as the GeForce 4 does have a few extra features under the hood that the original Xbox's GPU doesn't have. Even so, that core config makes the TI4200 the closest you'll get to an Xbox GPU equivalent for the desktop. The card we're looking at today was obtained from a local recycling center a few years ago. It was extremely filthy when I first got it as it was just sitting outside exposed to the elements. I honestly thought the card would never work again, but after giving it a wash in my sink, seriously it was that bad, the card booted right up and worked just fine. It's worth mentioning that this cooler is not the original one that would have come with the card. I used to have the original one, but the heatsink looked like it had been dipped in a vat of acid, and the fan was completely stuck. As such, I purchased an artifacting TI-4400 for pretty cheap and used its heatsink along with the pretty beefy memory heatsinks that came with it. I will say, even though red has never really been Nvidia's thing, this card looks really really good with it. So enough on the card, let's get into testing it out. For the test system, I'll be using my good old Sony VAIO. It's using a Pentium 4 Prescott clocked at 3GHz and this time around I've upgraded the RAM to a whopping 3GB which surprisingly the system supports. For the OS, the only sensible choice here was Windows XP. All of the other specs will be on screen along with the drivers used for testing. One last thing, all of the shown footage was captured from an external device so there's no hit to performance. Let's now dig into some testing. The first game up is Star Wars Battlefront 2, and here I ran a quick match on Yavin 4 with lots going on to put a good load on the card. Using 720p with a low preset, the TI-4200 averaged 25 frames per second with 1% lows down to 19. While the game ran slightly worse than on the original Xbox, it looks way better here thanks to the huge increase in resolution over 480p and is still very playable at these settings. We're off to a pretty strong start with this game. Need for Speed Most Wanted is up next, and here I used a mix of low and medium settings as well as 1024x768 as the game doesn't natively support widescreen and I couldn't find a widescreen fix that supported Windows XP. Anyhow, the card averaged 27 frames per second, with 1% lows down to 13. 
Like with Battlefront 2, the game didn't run as well as the Xbox port but retained the good shader effects and reflections while running at a much higher resolution. Overall, the card pulled off something pretty great here when you consider it ran at 480p on the original Xbox. Next up we have The Sims 2, and I used 720p with all of the settings set to low. We averaged 29 frames per second, with 1% lows down to 11. The game looked about the same as it did on the original Xbox and ran about the same too. Now I did notice the game would have some issues with hard stops while scrolling around, as I noticed quite a few 300 millisecond spikes in our capture, resulting in the pretty poor 1% lows. Even so, the game played fairly well and looked nice too. Not gonna lie though, I was kind of expecting a bit more here. The next game is a bit of a wild card and a big surprise for me with Minecraft. I used an older version of the game with 720p and fast settings along with a short render distance. The card averaged 50 frames per second with 1% lows down to 15. The game was a great experience at these settings with some frame drops from loading in chunks as to be expected. Minecraft isn't the most graphically demanding game out there, but it's still impressive to see it running this well in HD on a graphics card from 2002. Now given the rest of the original Xbox's hardware, I don't think a port of this game would have been feasible, but the GPU definitely seems to be capable here. Next game up is Half-Life 2. Now we already tested this game in the last video, but I did want to show its results in HD. Using 720p with the medium settings and no AA, the TI-4200 managed 45 frames per second on average, with 1% lows down at 26. Frame times were good and all in all the game looked and ran a whole lot better than on the original Xbox, which would often see the game dipping far below 30 FPS at 480p. I think it's starting to become pretty evident that this chip really opens up with the faster hardware configuration and extra VRAM. The last game for today is Freedom Fighters, and I pushed the game all the way up to 1080p with the low settings. Surprisingly, the card averaged 54 frames per second, with 1% lows down to 14. The frame times could suffer a bit when a lot of effects were on screen, sometimes dropping into the teens, but this was really only in the worst of times. The game's frame rate was much more stable on the original Xbox, but the visual fidelity at 1080p was unmatched. I included this game to show that the Xbox's GPU can indeed handle some games at the time in 1080p, and there were even a handful of games on the original Xbox itself offered a 1080i, but it was a very small amount. Overall, I was really impressed by the results here, especially considering the game originally ran at 720p on the original Xbox. Finally, I measured power draw. Keep in mind this number was taken directly from the wall and does not factor in PSU efficiency. Using 3 d Mark 2001's nature test, the entire system consumed 162 watts. Now I don't have an original Xbox to compare, but I assume its power draw would be much lower. It's safe to assume the Pentium 4 is responsible for this pretty high power draw, as they can't get enough of the juice. Well, I'm actually really surprised by the performance of the TI-4200 at these higher resolutions. I thought the card would really struggle to run these games in HD, but actually, no. All of the games tested today saw very playable frame rates and good visuals to boot. It really goes to show that the original Xbox's GPU was a very capable part, and given these results, it makes me wonder if we could have seen more ports of games in HD on the original Xbox. For now though, I'm satisfied with the testing that I've done as it really shows what this amazing GPU can do despite being limited in certain areas. Anyhow, that'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one.